All right, so welcome everyone and thank you very much for coming. I'm Liam, I'm the course director for our flagship course at Terra.do Climate Change Learning for Action. So hello to our fellows and alumni and also hello to any members of the public who might be joining us from outside of Terra.do. Um, you, you can find out more about us if you like from our website and uh, just to let you know the next, our next cohort of Learning for Action will be launching in early May. Um, also, of course, a special hello and welcome to our guest speaker for today, Kimiko Hirata. Uh, Kimiko is the executive director of Climate Integrate, an NGO she launched with the aim of supporting decarbonization efforts in Japan and elsewhere. She previously worked as the international director at the Chinese, uh, sorry, the Japanese uh, nonprofit Kiko Network from 1998 until 2021. Whilst there, Kimiko spearheaded climate policy and advocacy efforts. Uh, and attended most of the annual international climate conferences. Concerned about a new bo boom in coal power uh, following, uh, following uh, the 2011 Fukushima Daiichi nuclear disaster in Japan, she launched, launched a multi-pronged campaign to fight the expansion of coal, which has so far culminated in the cancellation of 17 planned coal plants. She was also successful in gaining support from shareholders for Japan's first ever climate shareholder resolution, targeting Japanese banks. For all her efforts, especially in Japan, where, where NGOs typically lack any political power, Kimiko was awarded the Goldman Environmental Prize in 2021. Before I pass over to Kimiko, just a couple of points of housekeeping. Folks, please keep yourselves on mute uh, throughout the session, but you're very welcome to keep your cameras on so we can feel like we're in the room together. Uh, the Q&A for this session will be reserved for our current fellows in the Learning for Action course unless we run out of questions, in which case we'll open it up to the public through the chat. Um, so for the time being, please refrain from posting your questions in the chat. And if you're a Salamanders or a Tigers fellow, uh, you can find the link to Slido on Slack. Uh, again, it's a great privilege to have you with us, Kimiko, and thank you again for coming, especially uh, with it being so late in Japan. So without further ado, over to you. Thank you, Liam, for uh, the introduction, and thank you for inviting me to give a talk today to uh, you from many different parts of the world. This is a very exciting uh, opportunity for me. And uh, as introduced, uh, I am Kimiko, and I work at the uh, Climate Integrate, uh, but this is a very brand new organization established this year. So my uh, story for today is mostly about the work at the Kiko Network that I work, I've worked for 23 years. Uh, I joined this clim uh, Kiko Network. Kiko means uh, climate in Japanese, a climate network in Japan. Um, I joined this, the Kiko Network from its start in 1998. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a long experience as Japanese NGOs. But why I joined Kiko Network, just, back, uh, just a little bit of background, um, I realized that climate is changing when I was an undergraduate student in early 1990s, a long time ago. But I was, I was simply shocked by the fact that human beings destroy global environment, not only local locally and i started to wonder why is that and how big this problem is and who is tackling these issues and i found out that there was no solutions out there um, so i started to worry i i uh, got a job at the publisher but continued thinking about this and looking for uh, the approach or the way that how to how I could involve in this issue, but it was too big issue for me, and I was young and I have no skills on climate and no knowledge, and also I couldn't speak English <laughs> at that time, so uh, it's too big issue for me to make a decision. So it it took time, but I I spent time reading and searching uh, the information. And finally, I decided to join NGO or choose NGO as a pathway because politicians, uh, co corporates, and researchers on one specific issue 
to me, each of them are a perfect space for me to focus on working on climate. But looking at the Japanese NGO at that time, um, still probably by now, NGO space is very small in Japan and financial background, financial backup is very limited. So because of the limited resource and um, resource, uh, many Japanese NGO are very small, uh, limited uh, finance. And because of the uh, very small number of human resources we do, the NGO has enough the good strategy to tackle the issue. So I decided not to join Japanese NGO, but rather to learn how to you know, operate NGOs and how NGO function in the US. I went to Washington DC, I quit my job and went to Washington DC and then experienced several NGOs uh, working on climate. So that was my start uh, as NGO. And then I came back uh, and then joined uh, Kiko Network when it's from its start. So I chose NGO to tackle this issue. So my perspective is mostly about NGO perspective, but I hope that my talk will give you some insights uh, on how to tackle uh, this issue. So I share some of my slides. So, um, from, from late 1990s, um, I, know, I already know that NGO influence is limited in Japan. So how, how we could have impacts on the, uh, on, the, on the government policy. I thought that UN framework, having a stronger UN framework is very important to change Japanese policy. By the way, Japanese government is very stable and very conservative and so have a very strong tie with industry, big corporates. And uh, those incumbents uh, have a power and people in uh, decision-making control the, you know, pass, uh, the, the past pass. So it, it's very difficult to, you know, influence from the NGO. So we, I thought that strong UNFCCC's process, um, UNFCCC's uh, treaties could be a trigger uh, for Japan to um, step up on climate. So I do spend a lot of time uh, working on international space to get good um, treaty um, and a protocol or uh, agreement out of it. And it, it actually had some impact, but we, we've been struggling uh, to get good in you know, the policy and measure uh, in Japan, uh, for example, to have a regulations or to have good, good legislations or pricing or carbon. Those are not really uh, implemented uh, even until now. Um, and, uh, 11 years ago, Fukushima nuclear accident uh, um, happened. Uh, this was a disaster and this was a big uh, change of an energy system. And this um, energy system, we lost 26% uh, of uh, electricity sources uh, all over the Southern. And also I, soon after I recognized that the government changed the policy to allow new coal power plants to be built easily. And I thought that this is going to be a very big problem. And uh, I, together with teammates, decided to closely watch the, the, the movement of the government and companies. And this was a quite shocking and uh, frightening few years after Fukushima nuclear accident. Government, uh, with government support, Companies uh, plant a lot of new coal power plants con construction construction in only a few years, and 50 units of construction of new coal power plant are planned. And as you can see uh, from Japanese uh, map, the new plants <laughs> spread across the countries everywhere. It's only about it's only new plants uh, and. Uh, 
the size of the new uh, additional capacity um, is so huge. So um, before nuclear accident, I sort of mostly work on the policy side, um, but I needed to shift my priority to tackle this coal power issue. If all of these are built, emissions next few decades is going to be disaster and we are not able to you know achieve you know decarbonization rather it's it's going to be very difficult um, to to make a good transition towards um, emission zero but uh so we are i am not really a you know grassroots campaigner i i i understand myself as a policy person. So I was not sure what to do. But uh, first of all, I realized that there are no inf information available. Government didn't release where the new project will be planned and when it's, it's going to be built. So getting for picture is the first step um, that we took. So we created this map and we you know, um, looked uh, into the information one by one, and they, they share the full, full uh, uh, picture of, uh, of uh, the new core power development. And then journalists and you know the people understood that, wow, this significant number of core power plants are built. So that's the first step. And also we found out that there are no anti coal movement anywhere in Japan. After Fukushima nuclear accident, there are new anti-nuclear movement for sure in many parts of the countries. But in case for Japan, building such a huge amount of uh, coal power was the new trend and uh, existing coal power uh, told that they are already very clean. So people don't understand fully about the you know, issue and problem of coal power. So I thought that if there is no public opinion, or no voice from people, it's been possible to stop these plants. So we thought that education is necessary to the people. So I share some of the slides showing what we've done. <laughs> so uh, we created animation movies like cartoon to tell people uh, easily why what, what what is happening and why those are the program <laughs> we created some character um, and also one by one we created zoom in map and how many uh, elementary school those Dots are elementary schools or hospitals, parks, and you know, playground in such a three to five kilometer within three to five kilometer from project site, and share this information to the local people. Also, we produced the flyer like this, uh, and one of the uh, work we've done was to do a simulation of PM 2.5 release uh, from new site if it's built. And this simulation was not possible with Japanese researcher because there are no researchers to do this kind of work. So I looked around other countries and I realized that some of the you know, ex um, work has been done internationally. So we get uh, we've got support from them uh, and they're happy to support us to do the simulation for us. So we shared the data and then did this simulation. And this was, um, this work uh, became eye-opening event for local people. Oh, this is, coal power is not clean, even though companies argue this is clean. And this is Tokyo Bay. 12 million people lives in Tokyo Bay in tiny you know, Bay area. And there are four coal power projects are uh, planned. This is insane in terms of the uh, 
situation because uh, it's so population dense area and for copper plant plants are uh, planned. But uh, as a result of some of the campaigning, we are able to get cancellation from three out of four. Um, and with those information, we enter uh, the community and talk to the people. Um, it took several years actually, actually to get there uh, for local people to start you know, uh, taking action. From beginning, they are very, um, um, not, they are not free um, understand, they didn't free really understand the, the problem. So they say that, well, coal power is not really my issue. I, I care about the environment, but I don't work on coal. I do work on renewables, for example, or uh, coal maybe, coal is better than nuclear. So we do uh, need to phase out nuclear first. So we should accept coal or it is good for local economy. We do not have um, good business, big business like this, and local government is happy for tax income and also the jobs. So we cannot say no. So there are many um, uh, not supportive response I received. So we needed to talk and share information in a different ways and tested uh, the messaging. Uh, it took it took several years actually uh, in each of the location we targeted, but once people, some of the people, got to understand it and they started to work on locally, they attract other people, other local people, and uh, then their work uh, will their work got attention from local media and their work got attention to local MPs. So they, the number of the people who started to take action was not that big. It's like 10 to 20 people, um, but still they changed the dynamics in the local area. So they like do the uh, stand in front of the, the project site as you can see, the number of the people are not that big. It's not like, you know, 10,000 people demonstration. It's, it's only 10, 20 people or such in each, but they continue doing uh, actions or sending letters or um, uh, ma uh, making a request to meet, have a meeting with developer. And this list shows one of the sites, um, about, about the news coverage of the one of the, uh, one of the uh, sites by local newspaper. That, that local newspaper has, uh, in, has a quite big influence on the local politics. And they continue covering each of the actions, uh, almost every actions. <laughs> so, and they, the news, uh, news story is, has, become very supportive to the actions and critical about uh, the coal power. And that is really a change maker. Not only working on uh, the domestic, uh, uh, domestically with local people, I try to connect uh, our work to the international uh, movement. There are a lot of anti-nuclear, anti-coal new movement in many parts of the world, and they do have very good um, uh, success stories, for example. So uh, I wanted to connect that our work is not isolated, and we are connected to other, other, other you know, um, civil society groups. And also, I wanted to uh, get attention from uh, international media as well, uh, show and get the external pressure uh, onto Japan from outside, because Japan's uh, core expansion is bad for climate, meaning that bad for everywhere. 
So um, this action was held at the G20 meeting, and there are a lot of international press out there. And we did uh, the action in front of one of the nearby coal power plant uh, project site. And it was covered by many, many international media, Reuters, or Bloomberg, or New York Times, etc. So the picture at the bottom uh, was uh, the picture was used uh, used uh, by the New York Times front page news story, and the lady is looking outside from her apartment on the site of the new coal power plant. It's so near, just outside <laughs> of her uh, apartment. So we couldn't get top story, uh, top page article of Japanese newspaper, but we could get the, news, the New York Times uh, top page story. And we did some action like this. Also, in order to gain external pressure, uh, we use uh, together, together with Climate Action Network, that's a broad on civil society's network on climate uh, at the COP, uh, event of the UN conference, uh, we, the civil society, international civil society gave fossil of the day awards to Japan because of Japan promotes coal. And this was covered by most of the Japanese media. So it was so impactful events. Uh, also bottom four picture, uh, one page ad uh, by not only Japanese group, but um, coalition uh, group of uh, many NGOs asking Japan to stop financing coal. And right, uh, Mizuho and Mitsubishi is a company name. We targeted some of the banks or uh, a developer who develop or finance coal power. And I can tell that these front page, one page ad has significant impact um, on the decision maker. And in some places, uh, the local people took a further step to file a lawsuit. Um, the local people became plaintiff to um, sue the government or sue developers and these litigations goes on. Even though they fight against the power project on one side, they are saying that this is a climate case because we are trying to avoid CO2 emission. So we are fighting for climate, not for local environment. And also um, not only NGO capacity, but um, think tank capacity or research or anal analytic capacity is not really sufficient in Japan in order to tackle this. So uh, we gain support from outside research institutes to produce uh, the analysis on uh, the economic uh, impacts of the coal power, uh, be saying that coal power development will be quite risky business and it, there is a risk to be stranded asset. Again, I couldn't find any Japanese researcher to do this kind of research, unfortunately. So we needed to rely on Oxford University or Carbon Tracker, but they were happy to provide support and do this kind of work for our work. And uh, this is a picture of a shareholder uh, proposal. Um, well, share shareholder activism is quite you know, popular and not new in US or European countries last few years, but there are not such a um, case in Japan. So I wanted to, um, do a further step to tackle um, coal. And I learned from many friends outside uh, about this actions, activisms, shareholder activisms. Also, we knew that Mizuho, uh, one of the major bank in Japan, 
at that time financed copper the most in the world. So we need, we thought that we need to stop them financing coal. So we decided to purchase share uh, of Mizuho for the for for the first year and uh, lot uh, submit shareholder proposal. We didn't know how much we could gain attention uh, through this action in Japan because uh, it's <laughs> the quite new thing. But uh, we were able to get support from many institutional investors, non-Japanese institutional investors to support our proposal. And there are some Japanese investors, shareholders to support us as well. And it became huge news in Japan, even though that proposal didn't pass and didn't reach the threshold, this action um, became a trigger to, uh, for banks and financial institutions to be more aware and change policy on climate and coal. And we did it uh, on to MUFG, Mitsubishi Bank the next year. So I try, as I can say, I tried many different approach just to tackle coal. And um, I can summarize the you know, approach that I took by saying that first of all, I collect first of all information based on facts. And second, I went local and talked to people and tried to get their action. And third, I connect um, with international activisms and uh, try to generate external pressure to, to put pressure uh, on Japan and to make our voice bigger. And lastly, um, I use outside resources if we do not have enough you know, resource for research capacity or um, uh, good actions, you know, campaign strategy capacity. I ask, you know, others who have done that already outside of Japan. And as a result of this work, uh, I said that 50 uh, units were planned, uh, but 70 were uh, cancelled. I can I don't say that this is only by our efforts, uh, but I also think uh, I I am so I am sure that if we do not take action like this, a series of action with many of the uh, local people and with many of the support from many different people, we couldn't uh, achieve 70, um, 70 units cancellation. So um, from the beginning of the, this campaigning uh, against coal, because our government is so powerful and big corporate is so powerful, I didn't you know, think about you know, stopping one project is possible. From the beginning, I was not sure at all. But now I can say that what, what I thought impossible, it's not necessarily true. And um, also because Japanese NGO are so small uh, and I believe in that this is, this is true, but I also learned from this experience uh, that people has power even in Japan. So that, uh, that is a very uh, important um, lesson to learn by myself. So um, with this action, uh, I received Goldman Environmental Prize. And this is a very big encouragement uh, to the people who work with us uh, Sometimes they feel lonely or they feel stressed, they feel frustrated. I do feel as well, but 
um, we are told by this prize that this is meaningful actions and this is important and we did good and we did good result. That was very good encouragement and I am very um, grateful to get attention than before on the NGO work in Japan and also the uh, people working with, with me and also uh, the core program itself. However, challenge is still big. <laughs> As of now, still core power uh, is the biggest source of the missions. As you can see from this map, uh, including existing core power, there are 160 units uh, core power that are operating. So it's a long way to go. And some of them are under construction. Japan is still building new core. How we could stop it? Uh, how we could challenge it under the you know, uh, urgency of the climate? We are not yet in a good shape. So um, this is my last slide. Uh, so I see that our challenges are, first of all, we need to achieve deeper greenhouse gas emission cut by 2030 based on science uh, in order to achieve 1.5 degree goal. This is, well, apart from coal pipes, um, this is the um, aim that we need to achieve in, in, our, in, our, in our fights. In order for that, we need to defeat some of the core projects and also shift from coal to renewables. And we are advocating to deeper 2030 target as well from the current 46 to 50% reduction, which is not enough, we think. And also we want to get uh, the determination of fossil um, Japan is not yet ready to move away from fossil fuels or rather adding up to the innovative technology on top of fossil related technology or uh, developing fossil based ammonia or hydrogen. And, and we sh I think this is the, the area that we need to fight against. And thirdly, we need to uh, make sure to provide support and inclusion, especially to the people uh, who are in vulnerable situations or people who will be affected by energy transition. And also we need to encourage more people uh, to engage with this systemic, systemic change actions. As you can see that number of people who aware of the urgency and who decided to take action is very limited. And in Japan, activism uh, is very challenging, but, I, but uh, this is an uh, area that we need to change further. And lastly, these five, five points are the tips from myself, uh, from my experience as, a, as an individual. I have five points. I think starting from learning is important. I learn a lot by doing and I continue learning. Climate is such a deep and complex issue and I am studying and learning every day still. So, um, I think starting from learning is a very important first step. And secondly, set a goal and make a plan. This is, for, this is uh, important for our organization or corporates uh, or any entity, but also good for individuals to set a goal. What do we wanna achieve? What I wanna achieve and what, what to do. I think this is another important point. And third point is a broaden action items. It's very difficult challenge. And 
you may fail. I failed a lot. <laughs> and I tried different approach and I tried to figure out what approach is more impactful and how we could have influence on and how we could make change. So sticking one approach is one approach, but also try many different approach is also another way. And act locally. I do work globally, uh, starting from UN process, but also uh, I am aware that change needs to be happen locally. So acting locally is very important. And lastly, stay healthy and be optimistic. You shouldn't sacri sacrifice your healthy life uh, and you, uh, each of us deserve to be happy, to spend happy life. And um, yeah, it's important to be stay healthy in order to do good activism. And also it's easy to be get depressed uh, because of the climate situation is so severe and there are so depressing news out there and there are, it's, it's a tough uh, things but we should keep having a hope and we should be optimistic. Otherwise, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a so tough, <laughs> it's so tough. So I have a belief that change is possible and change is really possible. So I would like you to join this big challenge and uh, work together and I need your help and I need more people to join this. So I look forward to working with you in coming years. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Kimiko, for, for talking us through your story and leaving on such a, uh, a positive message as well. I um, really enjoyed hearing about the work you've done and and the way you are now and um we'll we'll move into a few questions for you before before the hour is up um there's quite a few coming in through slido already so uh, our fellows our current fellows can find the slido link in slack if you haven't seen that already um, and just to, re to remind people you can kind of upvote other people's questions to help bring them to the top which will help me uh, pick them out as well but before we go to any of those i just wanted to step back a little bit in your presentation, Kimiko, and, and um, ask a little bit more about what, because you, you showed that slide of how coal power is one of the biggest contributors to uh, greenhouse gas emissions right now. How, in terms of the energy system, the electricity grid in Japan, what does, what's roughly the makeup at the moment in terms of, because at the beginning you talked about how the, the Fukushima disaster knocked out 26% of the the energy energy supply or the electricity supply. How has that evolved over the last few years with these new coal plants being um, constructed? And what does it look like at the moment? And what what's the trend? Are, are you seeing a growth in renewables and to, to try and replace some of that um, new coal? Or what are the trends in, in the uh, electricity generation in Japan at the moment? Yeah, thank you for this uh, important question, uh, especially very important uh, to the country of uh, lack of energy resources. Uh, after Fukushima, of course, uh, we do have very um, limited uh, renewable energy uh, share. So most of the uh, electricity were produced by gas, uh, LNG gas and coal. And uh, coal share, becomes uh, bigger and bigger uh, until now. So 32% uh, from coal and 37% from gas, uh, LNG gas for now. And nuclear remains very limited uh, and many of them hasn't restarted. And nuclear increased uh, to 20% roughly. So it's increased, but not yet sufficient. Um, so how much and how quickly we could increase renewable is an uh, issue, uh, especially in the midst of the energy crisis now and high 
pri price hike uh, of the fossil-based uh, electricity is, of course, the big issue in Japan. And also the uh, risk of nuclear facility, nuclear reactor uh, is uh, become quite obvious of, of the current geopolitical situation. So um, this is a big debate in Japan, but still we are heavily rely on fossil. That's the situation we are now. Thanks, Kimiko. And so it sounds like there's maybe more appetite now than there has been in the past for expansion of renewables. Are the, you know, the incumbent government and the kind of the corporate powers there, are they warming up more to the idea of investment in renewables? Or is that, is it still a, a are they, is it, are they still pushing back against that? Well, uh, it, there are mixed, uh, actually, uh, the conventional uh, utilities and corporates uh, prefer a large scale uh, power generation, centralized, uh, such as like coal, gas and nuclear. So shifting towards renewables, uh, they think that they will lose income, they will lose benefits. Um, so um, they, they think they have to increase it, but they do need, they do prefer to maintain options of uh, other options. So diversification of the energy sources, uh, electricity sources is the government policy. Best mix is the government, you know, uh, favorite narratives uh, and <laughs> so uh, the policy is quite you know um, policy signal is not clear actually they do support pro uh, subsidy for coal, new coal technology they do provide you know uh, finance for uh, the nuclear uh, restart and they do support renewables so yeah there is not really dirty to clean transitions support, but they do support everything. So um, that slow down uh, the renewable uh, uh, increase, uh, penetration. And I think that's a programmatic. Um... Sure, yeah, yeah, thanks. So um, one of the most popular questions in our, um, in our Slido was from Narayan, which is a, a little bit more about nuclear energy in Japan today. So. Obviously, after the experience in 2011, there was there was a clear, clearly a closing down of many uh, nuclear power stations and a and a lots of, like you mentioned lots of campaigns uh, against it. How how does it feel now? Has there been any kind of moving on towards um, reopening some of those or or building any new ones, or is it still very much this is off the table now? We're you know we're we're not going to go back to this. Well, um, public perception uh, is still very negative. Uh, people don't want nuclear to restart and people don't want to build new ones, of course. Uh, and government um, wants to restart quickly uh, than as of now. And government wants to, some of the ally uh, wants to start developing new ones. Um, so there are pro-nuclear um, power, uh, obviously, but it's difficult. So government uh, put this constellation aside. Uh, it's so political to talk about nuclear by politicians, especially before election. So they, you know, um, <laughs> don't really take up the issue and then they don't face uh, the, the issues. Um, that's a situation, that's a problem, that's a problem. Uh, but in reality, uh, many of the Japanese uh, reactor is going to uh, be quite old, uh, over 40 years uh, lifetime. Uh, so they need to um, shut down anyway. And there's no political, um, uh acceptance um to build new ones it's totally impossible and in any case uh if japan decided to japan decides to build a small modular reactor that's the next generation you know uh, nuclear reactors 
it takes time uh, and we need to, you know, reduce emission by half by 2030 in order to keep the temperature low at the 1.5 uh, degree uh, increase level. Um, nuclear cannot play a big role to cover up the Japan's uh, electricity demand in time to uh, you know, tackle the climate. So, and very expensive. So even though that um, there are some, some of the you know, companies wants to develop and invest uh, the nuclear, it could play a very limited role in terms of the climate um, and CO2 reduction. Yeah, great. Thanks, Kimiko. And um, I'll move away from nuclear a bit now, but there's another, a couple more questions. If we get time, we'll come back to it. But sticking a little bit more with energy before we move on, um, you took, obviously you talked about how your campaigns were very focused on saying no to coal. Was, was your focus purely on, on saying no to coal or were you also talking about alternatives and trying to kind of um, switch people's focus from, from where they were planning all of these coal plants to say, here's something you can do better to, you know, meet the same demand or, um, you know, comparing it with solar or wind or other clean energy sources. Did you, were you working kind of in both spheres or was it very focused on, on the no to coal message? Last few years, our fight on new coal uh, was pretty much focusing on uh, the no coal because uh, it's new one and it doesn't uh, generate any electricity. It doesn't, you know, um, uh, it doesn't have any you know, employees and it doesn't uh, support the uh, local economy. It's new one. So uh, we do, and also in terms of the power generation, Japan ha in Japan, we, there are enough capacity to supply uh, electricity if we operate old power plants. So uh, we didn't have to talk about alternative, but stop building new ones. Um, we focus on that. Uh, we were able to focus on that, but now we, and uh, the time to tackle new ones. Uh, now we shift our focus from uh, focus to um, shift uh, the power generation from coal to renewables. And that's the different story. We need to talk about alternatives because, uh, and also we need to talk about transitions because people, there are workers working at the coal power plant site and also there are power generation already uh, made uh, in the coal power plant. Uh, so how we will shift, we need to share a work on the, the alternative sites uh, to make sure that power generation is okay. And also the cost is okay. And also the local impact of the local economy is okay. So we need to talk about um, other side of things uh, when we talk about the existing uh, energy transition. So we are yeah. getting there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, good stuff. So um, in all of your campaigning around the, the new coal plants and, and the work you did with the local communities, how much did you focus your messaging on the climate impacts and carbon dioxide and, and global warming and how much of it was more about the local impacts of air pollution and um, nitrous oxide and things like that it, it, clearly there's one which feels more locally tangible and one which is more international so what was the balance of those that messaging in your your uh, campaigning we combined those two messages together but um what message um, could have uh, impact on the local people's uh, awareness is clearly uh, health impact. So um, we talked about climate change and CO2, CO2 uh, emissions and uh, climate crisis. They, are, they understand that, but they get so serious about it. 
but when we show air pollution uh, simulation or um, local impacts, they get so serious. So we were not sure before we do this uh, study because in Japan, unlike country in developing, developing world, air is clean nowadays <laughs> and the people don't see smoke uh, out, out, out from near coal power plant site. So I don't, I was not sure how much people get, you know, um, attracted by the uh, study of air pollution, but, but actually that was uh, more, you know, um, yeah, more to say about their actions. Also, in, well, actually the trigger is different uh, the site by site, uh, how the local mobili mobilization grow is different. Uh, that's my experience. Who will stand up or who take a lead on it and what, what kind of influence that kind of, that people have and what, what is his background or her background and that, um, create the uh, movement differently. Um, and one of the sites in the northern part uh, was uh, the wetland uh, was uh, protection was a uh, um, one of the issues. Uh, the tsunami affected area copper plants were built uh, plant and people and there were wetland just next to the site and wet wetland was survived after tsunami uh, miracle. <laughs> so people see that this is a symbol of the you know, survival and or after tsunami, but right next to the, um, that, that facts get people, is, is really uh, the, the <laughs> got people's, you know, uh, people got angry about that fact. And yeah, so I think, yeah, it's different. <laughs> side by side um sure yeah that makes sense thank you so um maybe we'll we'll squeeze in a couple more questions before the hour is up um someone was asking about what what do you, are there are there any commitments major commitments towards net zero or you know uh decarbonization from the the big corporations in japan that um, maybe are you know working a lot with the government and and like you say have this have hold a lot of power politically. Do you see any movement from them already towards things like net zero commitments, which are um, you know popping up all around the world in, in the corporate space? Yeah, uh, I see a lot actually. Um, well, uh, the, our government committed net zero uh, in. 2020, I think. Um, and once government announced it, major corporate, including power companies or steel companies or heavy industry co companies announced uh, their vision of or target of, of 2015 at zero, all of the sudden, <laughs> they just follow the government. But so, 2050 carbon neutral or net zero is already agreed uh, target by everyone. But the, the issue is how to achieve it and what pathway to be taken. And the challenge on climate change is um, not Achieve, not only achieving net zero by 2050, but how much we could reduce emission by 2030. This is a uh, crucial issue. But unfortunately, including co companies uh, committed to net zero by 2050, their action now is very slow. And many of the uh, pathway that they draw is to reduce emission after 2030 with new technology which doesn't exist right now. So they are kind of, you know, delaying actions by using, uh, by taking up the innov innovative technologies 
and try to get a subsidy from government for the new technology. Um, so new technology, relying on new technology um, after 2030 um, means that prolonged lifetime of the business as usual activities. So that's what I'm seeing. So um, I have to say that there are many, many greenwashing statement or announcement and real action hasn't been taken. So our work um, is to look into uh, the, the, the real actions uh, and the problem of, the, of each of them and uh, try to um, make them to change uh, the course. Otherwise, we will uh, miss, we will just uh, waste the time. This is really a serious situation and many of the Japanese companies say something, say something very nice, uh, carbon-free technology or green <laughs> ammonia or you know um, net zero uh, technology but they do but what they do is build new coal power plants and uh, continue using burning fossil fuels um, it's so ir ir irresponsible uh, actions I have to say yeah yeah thanks for sharing that Kimiko and I, I think it's reflected throughout the world this this tendency towards making flashy announcements that aren't really backed up by the critically urgent actions that we need to phase out fossil fuels everywhere and and hopefully folks on this course with us are, are learning how to um, pick that apart and understand um, where those commitments are meaningful and where they aren't uh, and and so I'm sure it happens everywhere as well not just in Japan but it's it's so important to uh, keep uh, keep paying attention to that as well. So thank you. Um, two minutes left. I'm going to see if we can squeeze in uh, one last question from the Slido. And apologies, folks, that we haven't had time to get through them all. There's some great ones in here. Um, I, I'd love to touch on this one, which is asking you if you could just talk a little bit more about how you mobilize and, and motivate local people to engage in that, that activity and those actions um, and to, to kind of become uh you know the public face of the campaign against what might feel like a, a social pressure not to do that and especially what kind of support you you offer them to uh, to take those actions yeah uh actually this is uh, the most difficult part for us uh, japanese people don't want to be the uh upfront uh, and uh, don't want to say anything negative on the government uh, and demonstration is not popular. Uh, so um, people need courage uh, doing something something critical uh, onto uh, the corporate or government. But um, I do not have a good answer to it, but what I have tried, I feel, I, as I said, it took a few years <laughs> to get mobilized. So it's a, it's, a, it's a time of the struggle, but I kept talking. I mean, talk, talk in, 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 and provide information or data or analysis, uh, and also uh, invite people to talk to them. Uh, scientists or professors uh, and keep talking and share information for them to under free understand and free committed uh, until they until they commit to it. So I just didn't give up. So that that's the that's the way I took. Yeah, fantastic. All right, thank you so much, Kimiko. I'm conscious we're we're on the hour, and I want to. Um, let everyone go but especially you I know it's so late over there so thank you again for giving us your time and sharing your story we really appreciate it and thank you all for joining us and for your excellent questions and again I'm sorry we didn't get to all of them um, best wishes to everyone take care goodbye thank you bye-bye